Hello, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hey everybody, welcome. Joe McGee with Wednesday's Words of Wisdom. We take a word in the Bible, sort of expand on it a little bit, find some scriptures to kind of let you know what God was thinking and what he was saying. We're in a sort of a series about commands to believers. Because if you go through the New Testament, there are specific commands to the Christians. Here's how I want you to live. Here's how I want you to talk and walk. Here's how I want you to sleep and rest. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to occupy until I come. So these are great scriptures. We're going to start today in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. All these scriptures are from the New Living Translation, from the New Living Translation. So Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. What? Yeah, don't get drunk. You just get drunk. Don't do it anymore. Get filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a whole lot better. <laughs> Philippians 4, 6. Philippians 4, verse 6. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. What am I going to pray about? Everything. Everything? Everything. The Bible says watch and pray. You don't have to bow your head or close your eyes. You can pray all the time. Pray while you're driving, while you're mowing the grass. You know, pray while you're on the golf course. You just pray all the time. Just, just get God involved in what you're doing. Tell God what you need and thank him for all that he has done. God likes praise. He likes to be thanked. <laughs> First Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. First Timothy 4, 12. Don't let anyone think less of you because you're young. Well, that's good. Don't, don't let anybody think less of you because you're young. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, in the way you love, in the way you use your faith, and in your purity. In other words, in the way you do everything. Be an example. You know, you want to be an example. Second Timothy two twenty four. Second Timothy two twenty four. A servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Everybody? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach, be patient with difficult people. It's in the Bible. Be patient with who? Difficult people. You know, you ever run into those? Oh, my goodness. What is it? Well, God's going to teach you how to be patient. Be patient with difficult people. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. Hebrews 13, 5. Don't love money, but be satisfied with what you have. For God has said, I will never fail you. I will never abandon you. You ever had lean times? I have. You've gone through times like, oh, man, it's kind of tight. What God say? Well, he said he'd never abandon me. He'd never leave me. He'd spoil my knees, so I need to get thankful. God inhabits praise. I need to get my mouth. Father, I want to thank you. It looks thin, but you'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. You'll supply all my need. We got some need right now, so I just want to take a minute and thank you for supplying all my need in Jesus' name. Real good. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. First Peter 5, 8. Stay alert. Now, one translation says it this way. Stay alert. Be vigilant. Watch out for your great enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, look for somebody to devour. What's going on? Well, the devil's looking for you. Why? He'd like to take you out. <laughs> the devil would like to take you out. What do you do? Don't let him. Don't let the devil take you out. So, mm, I like that. Stay alert, be vigilant. Stay alert, be vigilant. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 5. Matthew 6, verse 5. This is Jesus talking. When you pray, don't be like the hypocrites. What do they do? Well, they love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everybody can see them and hear them. I tread the truth. That is all the reward they will ever get. Now, I've been in church my whole life, and I remember every now and then, pastor closed out, hey, Mr. Billy Bob, would you close, close out prayer today? It's almost like there was a competition. Who can pray the longest and the loudest? We're going to pray for the missionaries in Zimbabwe. We're going to pray for the weather. It's like, no, no, you're just going to say closing prayer. And so... I like, we eat out a lot because we do a lot of seminars and go to a lot of churches. And, you know, we go to 50, 60 churches a year and we've been doing it 33 years. And so pastors love me because they'll have me pray over the food. So I usually pray this prayer, Father, bless this food to the nurse for our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Now I can do that in less than 10 seconds. What are you supposed to do? I'm praying over my food and I don't want it to make me sick. I'm going to bless it. I don't care who cooked it, who prepared it, where it came from. It's not going to make me sick. I bless the food that's about to go into me. It's a religious thing. It's a spiritual thing. It's not, it's not a, I'm not trying to show off with all the scripture I know. I'm trying to bless the food so I won't get sick when I eat it. So 
Keep things in perspective. Luke chapter 12, verse 4. Luke 12, 4. Dear friends, don't be afraid of those who want to kill your body. Oh, for they cannot do me anymore after that. There's some people that like you, they hurt you. Don't be afraid of them. Perfect love casts out fear. Just tell people, well, I love you. I'm sorry you're mad, but I love you anyhow. I'm sorry you're upset, but I love you anyhow. So you just, just keep yourself positive. First Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be fooled by those who say such things. Now, he's been talking about people that don't live right. He's telling them, don't be fooled by people who say such things. And he's been a whole long list of the chapter four of all the things he's talking about. For but bad company corrupts good character. He said, watch out who you hang with. Watch out who you spend a spare time with. Do they leave you better than they find you? Then don't hang out with them. Don't do that. They don't leave you better than they find you. Don't hang out with them. I like this. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. 2 Corinthians 6, 14. Don't team up with those who are unbelievers. How can righteousness be a partner with wickedness? How can light live in darkness? You got to learn how to separate yourself. Are you better than anybody else? No, but I'm not going to spend my spare time with an unbeliever. I'll spend my spare time with a believer. As iron strikes iron, so the countenance of a friend. I want to spend spare time with somebody who makes me better, makes me think better and act better, better husband, better father. I want to grow in the things of God. So I want to get around people that make me and help me grow. I'm not trying to show off. So uh, Ephesians 5.18. Don't be drunk with wine because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> yeah, it's real deep. And I grew up uh, with alcoholic people in my family. And you realize, uh, how'd that turn out? Not good. So even when I was in the Army, you want a beer? No. And I said, you holy? No, I just don't want to be drunk. Uh, I saw alcoholics, alcoholic uncles and aunts, and they'd have the family reunions. They'd get drunk, throw up in the yard. And I thought, I don't want to do that. That's just really dumb. So I never did drink. I never did smoke. My mom and dad smoked most their whole life. And I love my parents, great parents, but they smoke. And so I remember trying to eat my eggs in the morning and, and the smoke in the kitchen. <laughs> Couldn't breathe. So he said, Are you religious? No, I wasn't religious, but I don't want to smoke. I want to breathe clean air. I don't want to drink you know, some taste like horse urine. I don't want to drink beer either. So I don't drink. So I've never drank, never smoked. So I'm coming to hold it. I just grew up in a family that did that a lot and I didn't like it. So that's a different way of thinking it. Um, Sec Thessalonians 3.13. And the rest of you, dear brothers and sisters, never get tired of doing good. You ever done that? I have. Well, you get mad. Like, Man, how long have I got to do good? Forever. That's go one mile, go two. That's for your shirt. Give me a coat. We well, try to walk in love, trying to keep God moving in my life. It's really good. Um, Hebrews 6, 12. Do not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Do not become spiritually dull and indifferent. Instead, you'll follow the example of those who are going to inherit God's promises because of their faith and endurance. I want to follow people that are used to faith. I want to follow people who are believing God for a better family and a better life and a better job and a longer life. That's who I want to hang with. So... Um, Hebrews 13, verse nine, Hebrews 13, nine, do not be attracted by strange new ideas. Your strength comes from God's grace, not from rules about food, which don't help those that follow. And there's always something new under the sun. There's not, well, there's nothing new under the sun. Somebody thinks they got a new idea. No, there's, there's no new sin. Same sin been here from day one, nothing new under the sun. So don't get caught up in stuff. Well, there's a new thing. No, there's no new thing. No new thing in the sense that I watch out and don't be attracted by stuff. Matthew 7, verse, uh, verse 15, Matthew 7, verse 15, says this, Beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep but are really vicious wolves. False prophets. Well, I'm spirits and I go to church. What's coming out of your mouth? I used to tell people, I used to tell my kids, do you like three bucket loads of what they just talked about? No. Stay away from them. There's nothing good that's coming out of them. It's all bad. Don't don't hang with them. Um, Luke 12, 15, Luke 12, 15, beware. Guard against every kind of greed, for life is not measured by how much you own. Now, I've done this. I did it when um, I remember being in the first grade. I grew up in a little country community. I had a bird haircut, my, my, I think, up through the fifth grade. Uh, we didn't have a barber. Dad take those things. So I didn't have to worry about combing my hair. I had no hair to comb. 
uh, had a family full of, uh, girl cousins. So I wore, I wore a lot of girl shirts cause they do hand-me-downs. I wore, remember I was in the first grade and had a shirt with pink owls that buttoned backwards. Did it bother you? No, I didn't even think about it. I was trying to get a shirt, you know, but after you get in school, you realize, man, there's competition people are showing off. I can do this. Now I've done this. Now I can hit harder and spit further and whatever. And you realize, what's the competition about? I thought we're supposed to love one another, serve one another. And you realize, no, we just got people getting carried away. So guard against every kind of greed and life's not measured by how much you own. Just you. Second Peter chapter three, verse 17, second Peter three, 17. You already know these things, dear friends. So be on guard. Then you will not be carried away by the errors of these wicked people who lose their own secure footing because we've all had people in our life and our family realize what happened then? Well, they went stupid. And I don't mean to say this in a bad way, but I have a saying that I got a made a bumper sticker one time, never put it on the truck. Good people go stupid all the time. And you can't go with them. And they go stupid all the time. You cannot go with them. So watch out. Just listen, pay attention to people around you. Um, second John chapter 10, second John 10 and 11. Second John ten eleven, if anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give them any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. So there's been a lot of scriptures there about who you hang with. You know, how do you know who to hang with? Listen to what comes out of the mouth. You want some of that? Don't hang with them. If they're thirsty, give them water. If they're hungry, feed them. They're in prison business, but do not spend spare time or eat lunch with them. God's real clear on that. So it's been a good lesson to learn. So God bless, guys. Thanks for listening today. Tune in next time. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. He's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.